Hey guys, Sean and I have been out here riding these 2024 Catalyst M600 sleds all day. We didn't really know what to expect. There's been a lot of hype about it. Totally new platform for 2024. We're gonna share with you our ride impression of the M600 Catalyst, but first here's a breakdown of the new platform with Articat Engineering. Hi, my name is Andy Beavis. I'm the Mountain Product Team Manager at Articat, and I'm here today to kind of look over the new Catalyst with you and go through some of the new features and benefits. Okay, so this is an all new platform for us. We've been working on this for at least five years in different different configurations. Everything is new this year. We built it from the inside out based around lightweight, mass centralization, new updated rider ergonomic you know, package where everything's right where we want it to be for the rider. All new wrapped in all new bodywork. So we're gonna kind of show you first how it comes apart and we'll dig into some of the details on the inside. First off, we got heated storage up front for all of your goggles, gloves, all that. Easy access to the inside, three quarter turns. Panel comes off. Easy access to your two stroke oil. You can see the new belt drive. Uh, similar exhaust system to the to the past. Three quarter turns on the other side. Gets you into your coolant bottle, your clutches. And for any reason, people like to open the hood and see what's under there. Two quarter turns on the side. Unhook your headlight harness. There's a simple quarter turn in the front. Turn left, lift up. Hood comes off. This is all of our intake system. Spare belt holder underneath. You can see the getting through to the heated storage area underneath. This is the hood harness you got unhooked. This platform is built around our laydown engine that we've been working with since back in early 2000s. Kind of taken to the next level, refined, improved, um, updated over the years. It is our, basically our current C-Tech 600 motor. Uh, new V-Force reeds, new fuel injection system, new exhaust valve control, all new electronics running the, the stator and the fuel injection system. All new exhaust, new intake but the key thing is this engine packaging allows us to do this layout that no one else can do we got the fuel close to the engine throttle by is up front the exterior is our airspace and down in the meat of the chassis it's all your heavy parts crankshaft engine clutches so on this new layout in the catalyst the the engine the drive clutch the pipe the exhaust the intake all that stuff's about an inch lower. And then also the fuel tank's been brought forward and tucked in pretty tight to the engine, <laughs> which is really part of the mass centralization theme. Coolant tank, oil tank, everything really tight, centrally located. Um, all the electronics are pretty much on this side, which keeps all of our wiring routing and stuff really, really clean and, and a lot lighter. The Catalyst chassis on the on the new platform, it's ultra high strength steel. It's all welded, minimal fasteners. Um, gives us a lot of clearance. You know, high strength steel as opposed to aluminum allows us to tight package everything a lot, a lot cleaner. Fit the steering. You can see how there's not a lot of room in here for everything, but the chassis accommodates uh, lay down. We call it the performance steering system up front and then the mountain steering in the back to give us our vertical with the U-joint on center, minimal joints, minimal places to, to create slop, play. And then tie rods are mounted right to the steering post. And then from there, we do have very specific suspension on the mountain sleds versus the ZRs and the trail sleds. We have our own spindle, we have our high caster spindle design for off-trail riding. 
Front suspension movement and motion is very similar to the Ascender. You know, modified to fit this frame. The upper A-arm's lower, ski's a little lower. Spindle's been all refined, tucked in tight for clearance. Keeping everything really narrow for side hilling and cutting through the snow. Our adapt clutches that came out in the Ascender uh, over a year ago were designed for this new Catalyst platform. You can see how tight the belly pan is. That's why the clutch was designed to be narrow, it's lighter, has our idler bearing system in it. Again, everything mounted low and centralized. You can see with the hood off how everything is, is really compact and tight to the motor. And then from that, the bodywork is just airspace and headlight. So all the meat of it is really tight and low, and that's what you know gives the the ride and the feel of this new sled is all this stuff working together. Lightweight, but then where the weight is located is just as important. Okay, over on this side, got a new oil tank. Again, tight and central to the fuel. Holds about two and a half tanks full of fuel worth of oil. You know, capacity is what we need, not a lot more. Uh, exhaust system is pretty pretty carryover from our previous designs. Modified to fit in here. New covers for heat dissipation, but the big thing everybody is wondering about is a new belt drive. You can see it's a two point. There's no idler. Uh, it's, it's a little hard to see in here, but there's multiple mounting positions for the top bearing carrier. So we actually have four drive ratios that fit in this center line, center distance case. And then there's an eccentric on the top bearing that allows us to take up a little bit of room to fit those four different ratios. So same belt on everything. Can be changed out with simple tools. Loosen the three screws, cam it back. You know, take the bolts off, pulleys and belt come off. It's eight millimeter pitch belts made to last the life of the sled, nickel coated pulleys. The ratio on the mountain sled is very similar to the Ascender. Same with the ZR and the Riot. So we have those three ratios plus one lower gear ratio for real high altitude and or other potential ratios in the future with an accessory idler system that we have in the works. So on the new Ascender, we are carrying over our proprietary alpha rear suspension. We've changed it around a little bit. We've increased front arm travel, a little more positive stroke on the front arm shock, slightly more aggressive ratio on the rear arm shock. So front and rear arm pull rod are different. Shock valving, of course, has all been optimized to this sled, but the rail itself the tracks are carryover from 23. We have the 146 and 154 26, and then the 154 3 inch in the 600. We have quite a few new long fiber composite parts on the Catalyst chassis. We actually started that work a few years ago on the Ascender with our TCL plate on the clutch side. It's a really long glass nylon based uh, composite. It's really strong, durable, gives you a good amount of flex without breaking, um, allows us to uh, consolidate a lot of parts. In the toe stop area, we're mounting belly pan, running boards, bottom out protector, tying everything together with the one part. There's one in the nose of the sled, and then of course the, the running boards and kick up. So the cool thing about the composite is, it flexes, it uh, has lower thermal conductivity than the metal and the painted powdered parts. So the ice tends to stick to it less. And then the other cool thing about it on this chassis is it is replaceable. So if you catch a log or a stump or you sideswipe a tree, the running board can be taken off with a bolt up here, one rivet here, a couple bolts in the back, screws along the bottom, the whole running board comes off, and then we actually have the tubular welded aluminum accessory boards that you can put on in, in place or replace one side if it gets damaged. 
we've got a lot of questions about the tunnel on the new catalyst mostly because we've always had a replaceable rear section on the Articats behind the ETT and that was always you know for sleds cartwheeling down the hill hill climbs people crashing making it easy to replace that rear section we we're able to make it stronger make it lighter take out a bunch of parts by going with this new one piece design flat top we have a lot more clearance in the center section than we've had in the past and then a lot of people ask that have changed the tunnel before can I still change the tunnel on this and the answer is yeah it's actually not much more work than changing the rear section was before and the cool thing is up front here the tunnel basically comes off behind the drive system so if you did have to change out the tunnel after cartwheeling it down the hill you can leave your track and your drive shaft in a couple bolts take the seat off gas tank off tunnel comes off the rear section the drive system motor mounting everything stays in the sled it is significantly stronger it's been designed in with the chassis with the reinforcement that ties in the running boards and the new attached system in the rear suspension and with these new shorter tunnels of course they are a lot less prone to being broke because they're not hanging out there to get in the way hey guys we spent the day riding the 2024 articat catalyst chassis wise it is very impressive definitely a big step up over the ascender just as soon as i hopped on it i feel comfortable It just feels very natural and it does what you want. It's a very comfortable sled, for sure. In terms of the weight or the feel of the sled, I'm not sure how light it is. That's not something that Articat uh, is talking about at this point in time, but I can tell you that it feels light. And I think a lot of that has to do with all that stuff that they've talked about, that mass centralization, getting the weight from the engine and the fuel tank, bringing it all into the center, getting it as low as you can. Uh, it's just something that's tangible when you're riding it. Um, it's hard to say like, oh yeah, this thing's mass centralized, but what does that feel like? Feels agile, it feels nimble. Just, I felt very comfortable riding it um, as soon as I got on it, basically. A lot of people are gonna say, you know, where's the 800, where's the 800 plus sled? That's what all the mountain riders really want. But first year, 2024, we've got the 600. This little 600 is really peppy. I found like, especially once you get halfway into the throttle, it really pulls, like it's surprising. And some of the stuff that we've gone up today in, in the snow is pretty deep snow. I didn't think that we could have done that on a 600 sled. So I think combination of that, it's just got lots of nice power. And with the track, that alpha track, the way that it just conforms to the terrain as you're going up, you just get tons of flotation and tons of traction. We were just wiggling way up, our way up stuff and I, I couldn't believe that we were getting there. I haven't been on a 600 in probably, I don't know, five years. And I kind of, in my had thought that they were underpowered. Today totally changed my mind on that. They're a ton of fun and they go great places. We got good snow here and they just chug, they chew. We're here in the uh, West Yellowstone uh, Island Park area. From what we've ridden today, there's nowhere in this area that we couldn't get to on this sled. It's not gonna climb up the steepest slopes. It's not gonna necessarily go up a, a really, really steep thing like you do on a, you know, an 850 or turbo sled or something like that. But there's honestly nowhere in this whole area that we couldn't get to by working our way up a different drainage or going up a ridge line or whatever. And that's a lot of the part of the fun of this sled is that, um, you know, it makes you challenge if you want to get there. It's a little bit challenging to get there because you can't just rely on that power. You got to rely on your skill and finessing the sled. So that's been a lot of fun for us today. In terms of the ergonomics of the sled, uh, you get the vertical steering that everyone who's riding an Articat is used to by now. Um, and the controls are gonna be familiar as well for you. Uh, so nothing's changed there too much. Uh, the riser is pretty short, which is great. Gets you into a nice athletic position, knees bent, keeps you nice and low on the sled, ready to handle different terrain. Uh, the cockpit area is pretty cool. We've got a little storage spot up front. We managed to fit two water bottles and two burritos in there. So there's a little bit of space in there and a little gauge up front that tells you all the important stuff. So the tunnel's shortened and it's, it's cut quite up along above the track. So um, I think 
Based on our experience today, it feels like that does a great job of clearing the snow out. It doesn't feel like it's ever getting hung up on the back. And you'd be surprised that you can actually get the skis up in situations and actually kind of bring it back around. And uh, that tunnel's not really getting hung up on the snow back there. So that's a great feature for this sled. So not only does this thing look good, it rides good. It takes very little effort to make it do what you want. Looking down on it, it's good. It just like looks good and it makes it ride good. That's the three G's of snowmobiling. Look good, ride good, feel good. I'm gonna say it is the most comfortable I've ever been riding an Articat platform sled before. You hop on this thing and right away you just feel like you're very in control, easy side hills, easy turning. Uh, it just feels very natural and, and right away within uh, you know, an hour or two of riding. I was like, wow, okay, I can go where I wanna go with this thing. All right, guys, that's it. So we had a super fun day on these things today. If you get a chance to ride one of these, do it, because you're, you're gonna be surprised. It's an awesome little sled. This is a home run for Arctic Cat, and you're gonna have a lot of fun. So we got more riding to do. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you guys later.